and they're a, a premium models. And so, you know, what should what should players be looking for, like from a price point? I, well, sorry, I haven't started. I was just I was explaining to you, but uh, 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 yeah. Hi guys, Sandy here, and today we have an amazing episode here with Manu Martin from Mehora 2 Paddle. I am sure you recognize um, his face, and we are going to discuss what you should be looking for in your racket. Manu, great to have you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad to, to stay with you. So, well, let's see. Perfect. So, the idea here is, is to focus on what a player should be looking for when they're choosing their rackets. Now, you know, hundreds of models, thousands of, you know, different opportunities they could choose. What's the first thing that they should be thinking about when looking for a racket? Well, in, this is, in my opinion, in my experience, the, the first thing is to know what kind of player you are. And according to that, if you're an aggressive player or a defensive player, that you should be aiming or looking for a different kind of stuff. Okay, so let's look through the different categories uh, and the different kind of characteristics of the racket, and then we'll kind of explain it for both of those. So first, let's talk about the, the shape of the racket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the, sh the shape of the racket changes the, the performance of the, of the racket. No? So you, we have three shapes, the most common, the rounded, uh, the hybrid, and the diamond. Mm -hmm. So according to that, with the round, the, the good thing that the, the round shape has is that the, the sweet point, that is that point where, where when you play, you feel that mm -hmm. the, the racket sounds good and that you have that control, is closer to the hand. So mm -hmm. the closer it is, the more control you have because it's easier mm. to, to find the, the ball. So if you're looking for, uh, for more control, if you are looking to f for fe feeling more comfortable when you're at the back, then you should be uh, looking for that, uh, that kind of, of racket. And maybe for people that are quite new to the game. Yeah, exactly. When you're coming, coming into paddle for the first time or maybe you're just meeting the, the sport, I highly recommend to begin with this rounded one. And most of all, because it's even better for your injuries. For example, the, the elbow uh, tennis, you know, mm -hmm. mostly of the people know that injury. Uh, well, this kind of racket, the balance is lower. So you can feel that it's like it changes the direction in, a, in an mm. easier way. So. It's putting less pressure on the, yeah, the exactly. wrist, elbow, shoulder. Um, and obviously the, the, the other shapes, the hybrid, it's, it's more kind of more weight further, further down the, uh, the, the racket. The, the, the balance is located in, into the, 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 the end of the racket. So you have more power, more power, but instead of that, well, it's more difficult to change the direction. So you will feel, if you're a beginner, that it's easier for you to, you, to perform the best mm. with the rounded one. Mm. And nowadays we have, you know, hybrids, teardrops, diamonds, they all have kind of different attachments yeah. to, to the racket. But essentially, you know, just to summarize the round shape, the balance and the sweet spot is nearer to the hand, so easier for control. And the diamond, where there's, there's kind of more space at the top of the racket, that is essentially moving the sweet spot further down and therefore it's kind of a little yeah. bit, bit heavier on the arm or it feels heavier. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we have the hybrid that is just in the middle. So yeah. it's like they're trending now because, well, I think it's a good point in the middle of uh, both sizes. And so for those players who they don't know, don't know what to choose or not, mm -hmm. hybrid is a good decision. Okay. So the next characteristic is, is the weight of the racket. And, and here you get a little bit of a, a range, um, all the way from almost junior and, and ladies rackets, at, what, 340, 350, yeah. all the way, some up to almost 400 with, with the rackets. <laughs> well, some professional player, they're using 400, as you said. But anyway, most, mostly of the brands, the, they are selling uh, only until 375. Mm. Uh, it's uh, difficult to see some pallet racket close to the 380. Mm. So my recommendation used to be uh, for a woman, uh, it's about 350 until 365. Mm. Mostly, according to the weight, it's not the same in Spain than, for example, in Sweden, according of, of the, the side of the, of the woman. And we are talking about the men, uh, it should be from 365 mostly until, it, it's up to you, but for the beginners, no more than 375. 
Uh, I have to remind you that when you are using the grip, the grip uh, used to weigh about five grams. Mm. So every time you use the grip, the over grip, mm. then you're adding mm. more more weight to the to the racket, and it changes the balance and it changes the the weight. So the, the that feeling that you have with the with the racket changes. And even more when you have the Hessecore grip, or you exactly. put these these rubberized grips on exactly. uh, the the point there. And even more when you're using the protector. Uh, mm. This, uh, how do you say? It? Yeah, the racket protector, the plastic, yeah. or the on, on yeah. the top. Mm. Exactly, it, ch it changes the weight and most of all the balance because it's uh, far away from your hand, so you can feel that the balance is very, very different when you're using that protection. Yeah, and a lot of people think that if the racket is heavier, they get immediately more power, but it's also a, a physical thing, mm. right? The, the technique needs to be good yeah. and that you have to have that strength, right, to, to do that. Yeah, and, and we have good example of player, pro player. I, I know that we shouldn't be in the mirror with the, with the pro players, but anyway, uh, we can have some players with low, uh, really low weight, but mm. acceler accelerating a, a lot mm. the, the racket. So uh, you have to think about that. If you have a good technique, maybe you can handle uh, heavy weight, mm. but otherwise uh, you will get injured. So according mm. to that, you, if you're gonna try, because I think it's better, better if you can handle a heavy racket, mm. but you have to be pretty sure that you're not going to be injured. So mm. get increasing the, the weight uh, in, an, in a slow uh, way. Mm. So you are getting sure. your body used to yeah. that, that increase. So mm. the first time that you feel that you get, you know, stress mm. from the, from your muscles are stressed, stop. Mm. Because some, this injury that you, that you feel or you think that you're okay, you're okay, and suddenly you begin to, with a little pain, mm. and then you're, you're out because yeah. you tomorrow you will be bad. Mm. So it's uh, go uh, going up, increasing, but very very slowly. Mm. And if you feel any, you know, any pain, stop. Mm. I think it's important when you said as well that the lighter racket, the swing speed can be faster. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily like doesn't necessarily mean you can't play aggressively with a, a light racket. And it's a preference, right? Me, I, I like having a lighter racket. Uh, the, the only problem with the light rackets, it's that mass, that uh, that feeling when the ball is coming, the force on the ball, yeah, yeah because of the coming mass. hard, mm. you you will be struggling to yes to to touch the ball in the right place. And when you are not touching the ball with the sweet uh, point, this is something very common with me, for example. <laughs> me too. Then the 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 the, the, the racket is like shaky, mm -hmm. begin to shake. And when mm -hmm. it's heavier, well, it's it feels more, more solid. Yeah, more mm. solid. Mm. So that's the key. If you all we would like to have solid rackets, but fast rackets. Mm. That's, uh, that's the key. So you have to be balanced between mm. the weight and how uh, solid is the racket. Mm. Nice. So another really important factor is the hardness of the racket, how kind of soft the racket is and how hard. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, this is something very interesting to talk about and this is something that the beginners sometimes misunderstand. The soft one, when, you, when you're playing with the soft one and you're uh, playing with low low speed, you can feel that the ball goes very fast, mm. fast. But in, in the noise is like very loud. You can feel that, uh, well, it's a really great noise. But when you hit with the high speed, the, the rubber is not able to recover. So you're mm. doing your best best smash ever, but the ball is not coming. It sounds, but the ball is not coming so fast. Yeah. And just the opposite when, with the hard one. The mm. hard one, when, when you're playing slow, the ball mm. is not bouncing very much on your, on your racket. Mm. But, and, and the noise is like, you know, like a table. Mm. But when you hit very strong the ball, then the ball is coming very fast. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, uh, the, the rubber, the materials have the time to react and to recover. Mm. And that's the reason why mostly of the professional players, they use hard. For the, yeah, for the added power, yeah. But uh, this is something that I have, I think that the, the, the beginners, they don't have to copy so fast mm. because uh, obviously it's more, uh, it's more difficult for your muscles. Mm. So I think that the beginners should uh, begin with the soft, with the soft one, is mm. with a, it gives you a, big, a bigger sweet point 
And after that, you have to decide if you want to go to the harder or stay with the, with the soft or with some medium. Yeah, so it's almost use the soft one when you're getting into the game to get that control on the ball and, and almost get your body used to yeah, and paddle. Bigger sweet spot. Bigger sweet spot. Sweet spot. Mm. And, and after that, you can decide. It's like driving a Ferrari. Mm. No, it only it gives yeah. you power when it's so high or not. Oh. Yeah. Learn to drive in a Prius and then get the Ferrari. <laughs> exactly. That's the plan. Exactly. Okay, nice. So we get asked a lot um, about the prices of the rackets and are they good rackets at the lower price end? And also, you know, when should players decide to get the more expensive racket? And what are your thoughts on, you know, the pricing of the rackets? Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. And, and this is something that I think that, that the, the people, the players, have to think about. Well, uh, it's, for example, I don't know if you like wine or you guys like wine, but if you like wine, then you can, and you have a really expensive one and complex one, mm. then you can feel that differences and you can feel that sensitive. And then you will pay for it because you can feel and appreciate all the differences. Mm. With the paddle racket, it's the same. When you're going to uh, a more expensive one, that racket gives you uh, something else, more balance. But you have to be a good player to really use that, that racket. You have it to be really good. Otherwise, you will not, not, not notice that, that difference. Yeah. And uh, for that players, it's, it's even better begin with a, a cheaper one. Mm. and begin to understand the paddle and understand the, all the feelings with the racket. And once you're ready and prepared, you can go to a, a more expensive one. But it doesn't mean that you're not able to use the, the more expensive one. It doesn't mean that it's not going to help you, but you're not going to use all the specifics of, of the racket. Mm. So, it's also almost difficult to appreciate it yeah. if it, uh, I mean, there are a lot, a lot of good models for, for beginners or for people starting out that they don't necessarily need no. that expensive, that you, expensive racket. You can, and, and you're going to play so good. But mm. if you're a good player, you will use it and you will, you know, uh, uh, you will use the, the whole racket mm. in, a, in a better way. So I think that it's, uh, if you're a beginner or you're medium, you don't have, you don't have to. If mm. you want to, do it, but you don't have to spend so much money when you're just going into public. Yeah. When you feel that it's a moment, then go ahead. So if, if you are choosing now as a beginner or intermediate or even advanced player, you know, for a new racket and you're looking at the different prices, what's the best way to, to test? Like, what, how would you test for, for your racket? I always say the same, go on court and mm. try the racket. Mm. So first thing, to know what you're looking for. Mm. Second, second thing, what, what am I looking for? More control, more power? Okay, now you know it. Now think about the price. Mm. And then with the kind of racket, rounded, uh, soft, for example, round, soft, and I have 150 euros, mm. then go and try two or three rackets. Yeah. Otherwise, you're you will get crazy because there are many models mm. uh, and very good models, very, a lot of brands, so it's, it's very difficult. So first of all, define what you are looking for and mm. then go on court and try it. Mm. Two, three, four rackets, anymore. And after that, after trying, choose. And, and, when, and when you say buy. try, yeah, and then buy. But when you say try, it's, you know, five or 10 minutes, like you spend some time hitting or, or longer if you can. In my opinion, try to compete. Okay. That's my opinion because, mm. you know, warming up, all we are very good. But mm. when you're really playing, competing, then uh, it's, it's the, real, mm. the real situation. So in my opinion, if you can compete for a, for a while, maybe 10 minutes during one uh, match with your friends, one, mm. the whole match, try the four rackets. That's a good suggestion, actually, because we have a lot of people that try a racket. They say, oh, I love this. Perfect. They buy it and then play the match and they lose and they're like this. Yeah. And that's good because the reason and the guilty one is the racket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. racket's fault. But uh, yeah, I think that most uh, all we have uh, had that sensation when you're competing and you're saying, oh, yeah, I feel uncomfortable with this racket. Mm. And suddenly uh, you will play with one racket and you forget the racket. And mm. that's your racket, mm. when you forget about the racket. When you're thinking uh, about the racket, this something is not going good. Because that's a good, yeah, that's a good yeah. advice. Good and, advice. And also it probably takes a little bit of time to get used to the racket, so. But the good one. Straight away. 
when you handle is like Harry Potter with the Yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to say Thor's hammer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You you touch the racket. This is my always racket. You that that sensation of I feel comfortable. It's like if I've always been playing with that racket. Yeah. That's your racket. Nice. You don't have to get used to the racket. Instead, uh, they're paying you for, for using the yeah. racket, or this is a present, and you have to. But uh, I will choose that racket when, that when you grab the racket and you feel the, the contact with the ball, you, you feel like it's your racket from uh, one year ago. And I, it's my opinion. Yeah, amazing. We, I mean, we've covered everything from fine wine to Harry Potter in, the, in this <laughs> yeah. video as well. Yeah. So let us know down in the comments what you think about the rackets and, and how you look for a racket. And I'll put on this side a video about how you can actually test your rackets.